Hey guys, welcome back to another lesson. Let's take a look at the Andalusian cadence or the Spanish chord progression on the baritone ukulele. Of course, we're gonna learn the chords, but you know, we're gonna add just a little bit more to make it sound beautiful and inspiring. Now we're gonna play the beautiful Andalusian cadence on the baritone ukulele. So this one is tuned just like a guitar. D, G, B, and E. However, if you don't have a baritone ukulele, you can learn this on the tenor ukulele. Check the description down below. Now, what is the Andalusian cadence? Well, it's a minor chord progression. Uh, we're gonna play it in the key of E minor. And it's a descending, descending, des descending chord progression. Uh, in the key of E minor, we will have E minor. Then we'll go one chord back and we have the D major the C major, and we finish with the B7 chord. Such a simple yet beautiful chord progression. E minor, D major, C major, and B7. Now just a simple twist to the chord shapes. I like to play the E minor with the singing G, so I have two, zero, zero, and three. I like the chord much more. D major, we don't change it, but for the C major, I like the same C major with the singing G, which is two, zero, one, and three. And we keep the B7 like the basic chord shape. Also, I like to use the rasgiado technique. It's some kind of a fake rasgiado, simplified rasgiado technique. I uh, use strum with ring, middle, and index in sequence. which gives a beautiful color to the chord progression. So ring, middle and index. And you strum the strings slowly. Then when you feel comfortable, you can do it faster. Now after that, we have this beautiful melody, and I still consider this to be a lovely intro. So two strings, first and second string, for number seven and eight, five and seven, seven and eight, and five and seven. Now again, with a different position, we have three and five, two and four, three and five, and two and four. I mean, it's a beautiful intro. Now let's add a melody to the chords. So section two, some kind of a verse, right? So. So the goal is 
things to alternate a chord with a melody. Now I'm doing a different type of uh, strumming, so I'm strumming the chords with the thumb. I use the flashy side of the thumb so that I have this kind of you know, rounded and mellow tone. And I use the simple E minor chord. Now after that, we switch to alternate plucking. So I'm plucking the strings with index and middle, and the melody is played like this. You have second open, first open, and fret number two, three, two, zero, and fret number three. So one strum and then the melody. Now, same structure for the other chords, D major. So I'll strum the D major chord and then the melody is on the third string, second string, first open string, and then fret number two. Now, C major, you can play just a regular C major chord, two, zero, one, and zero. And then the melody is on the third string, then the second string, fret number one, fret number three, zero, fret number three on the second string, one, and zero. Now we finish with the B7, and we strum the chord three times. So B7, then we change the top note of the chord, fret number three, and fret number two again. Now the awesome thing about creating such a structure is that you can change the melody after, right? So you don't have to repeat the same melody over and over again. So the structure is the same, we still have the same chords and the same kind of melody, but we change the way we play it. For example, now a melody on one string here for the E minor, strum the chord, then you have second and first, then fret number two, three, five, seven, and eight. Now same thing for the D major. Strum the chord, then you have third string, second, first open, fret number two, three, five, and seven. Now I try to hold the chord for as long as I can. is usually up until I get to fret 5. Now C major, strum the chord and then you have 3rd open, 2nd string fret 1, 3, 0, 2, 3, and 5. Now B7, same thing, fret number 3, Now in the last section, let's take it to a whole new level. Let's play chords with the finger picking technique as well as a melody with a beautiful arpeggio. It sounds like this. Now we can break down this section into, let's say, two different moments. The first one is the arpeggio with the chord. For example, for the E minor, I'm putting down an E minor with the G on top, so it's two, zero, zero, and three. The arpeggio is a simple Pima, thumb, index, middle, and ring. We do it twice, thumb, index, middle, ring, thumb, index, middle, ring. Now here comes the melody, and we keep going with the arpeggio, we just change the plucking pattern. So you got the thumb, and then always second and first string. And while we alternate between second and first, we also change the singing note of the chord. So you have zero and zero, then zero and two, and zero and three. So I'll put it together slowly. Don't
don't forget to add the bass before you uh, pluck the strings with the alternate plucking. So arpeggio, arpeggio, bass. Now let's do the same thing for the other chords. Same structure, D major, arpeggio. Now the melody starts with the uh, bass of the chord and then you have third, second, third, first open, third, and fret number two. Now in this case you can keep going with the alternate plucking, so you could do index, middle, index, middle, index, middle. C major chord, same structure, arpeggio. And then the alternate plucking, start, start with the thumb, then uh, third string, second string, third, second string for number three, third string, and the first open, and the third again. We finish with the B7 chord. Arpeggio. And then the bass note with the thumb and then the second string and first string with alternate plucking. We you put the whole thing together. Now you can repeat this one twice and when you play it slightly faster, it sounds beautiful. We finish with a beautiful outro. E minor and D. C and B7, and then the melody in thirds. And E minor chord. Now for the E minor chord, we are arpeggiating the chord, the E minor. So just with the thumb, all the strings, then the E minor with the singing G, seven, and 12. It sounds beautiful on the baritone ukulele. Actually, it sounds awesome also on the tenor ukulele. They're just two different vibes. I love how deep and beautiful uh, the baritone ukulele makes the Andalusian cadence sound. So. Let me know if you like the lesson, guys. Take it step by step. Beautiful chords, huh? Enjoy this lesson. Let me know if you like it. And I'll see you next time.